so through the wealth of studies that we've had, we see a comparative benefit of GLP-1 receptor agonists compared to other classes of agents. And we see this directly in the head-to-head -head comparative studies. So for example, compared to insulin, we see comparable or even greater glucose lowering efficacy without weight gain, without hypoglycemia. Uh, very consistently amongst the GLP-1 receptor agonists compared to DPP-4 inhibitors, we see greater uh, glucose lowering with greater weight loss. Um, similarly, compared to the other classes, for example, sulfonylureas, et cetera, we see a very consistent benefit in terms of getting patients to goal, the percent of patients achieving glycemic targets without hypoglycemia and with some weight loss. GLP-1 receptor agonists really exert four main effects. One, they stimulate the beta cells of the pancreas to produce insulin in a glucose-dependent fashion. That means when the glucose goes up, insulin is secreted. When the glucose goes down, just like normally, it shuts off. This is very unlike a sulfonylurea where when you give it, it just goes and goes and goes until you know, it runs out. The other part of this is that when you give a GLP-1 receptor agonist, you're also suppressing glucagon. And remember, I mentioned that that hyperglucagonemia, that failure to suppress glucagon after a meal, causes the liver to dump more glucose into the bloodstream. So it's responsible for these huge postprandial swings in some of these patients. The other thing that a GLP-1 receptor agonist can do is slow gastric emptying. And I don't really mean slow it. I mean restore it back to a more normal level of function because most of these patients empty too quickly. They have this huge carbohydrate glycemic surge after meals. We're actually restoring their gastric emptying to normal. And the other thing that a GLP-1 receptor agonist will do is cause a feedback mechanism to the central nervous system to actually suppress appetite. So that's why these agents I consider to be the most physiologic agents for the treatment of type 2 diabetes because they hit so many different core defects. That's why they're so efficacious. That's why they have these wonderful non-glycemic benefits of reduction of weight, some reduction of triglycerides and lipids, all of the things we want in our patients. The GLP-1 receptor agonists um, are, again, injectable therapies. Um, GLP-1 is a naturally occurring peptide. Uh, produced in the intestinal tract in response to meals. Um, and uh, in nature, GLP-1 uh, stimulates insulin production uh, by the beta cells, reduces the uh, postprandial rise in glucagon uh, after meals, and both of those result in, um, in uh, glucose lowering. Um, but also uh, slows gastric emptying, so it's part of the ileal break. Um, so the idea is that as the GLP-1 comes out, it sort of retains the food a bit more in the stomach um, so that uh, digestion occurs more slowly, allowing the insulin uh, to catch up. And in the brain, it promotes satiety. As a pharmacologic therapy, we have analogs of human GLP-1, um, and then we have um, um, derivatives of a Gila monster salivary protein, um, exenatide, has been developed into a drug, and lixisenatide is an analog of exenatide. Pharmacologically, uh, the long acting ones are different than the physiologic story I. Uh, I told you about in that the gastric emptying effect tends to wear off after about 24 to 48 hours. The short-acting ones do have um, this effect on gastric emptying. And because we're using the drugs at exposure levels about 10 times higher than the natural state, um, there's a robust enhancement of insulin secretion um, it actually sort of normalizes insulin secretion in the setting of uh, at least early type 2 diabetes um, and a very robust effect on satiety. Um, so people have this sense of, of not needing to eat more uh, early in the meal. Sometimes they feel that as, uh, as um, sort of uh, feeling full, um, you know, like after a Thanksgiving meal, you know, sometimes that's not entirely pleasant. Some people perceive it as nausea. But in general, um, those adverse effects go away over a period of uh, days to weeks in most patients.
Um, so if we were to go down a list of the GLP-1 receptor agonists, the first one that was released is exenatide. It's uh, derived from a salivary protein of the Gila monster, um, and it's administered as an injection twice a day. Um, subsequently, it was developed into a once-a-week formulation um, called exenatide once weekly. Um, that is um, also an injection. They've taken the same exenatide protein and they've mixed it in some beads uh, that are slowly absorbed. It's this, the most slowly absorbed um, of the GLP-1 receptor agonist um, and probably as a result of that um, it has the best GI tolerability. But it does have an additional issue probably in part related to the beads uh, of forming some skin nodules and sometimes some skin irritation. So less nausea, new problem with skin irritation. Um, the the, the next agent that was released in the market was liraglutide. It's a once a day injection, but provides for 24 hour coverage. So it actually lowers fasting glucose. Exenatide in the twice a day formulation is so short acting that it doesn't do as well for, fast, uh, for fasting glucose. So the ones that, are, that have 24 hour coverage, um, like liraglutide and the once weekly formulations, do lower fasting glucose and therefore are generally associated with better A1C reductions. Um, and then there's son of liraglutide uh, called semaglutide. So it's the same kind of molecule um, that's been tweaked um, to make it uh, a bit more potent and perhaps it has extra penetration in the brain. It's a little bit unclear exactly uh, why it has the benefits that it has, but semaglutide is arguably the most powerful agent that we have. Um, it's once weekly and associated with more weight loss and greater A1C reductions than the rest. Um, dulaglutide is a fusion peptide where they've fused a GLP-1 analog with a big protein. As a result of that fusion, it doesn't penetrate the brain quite as well and therefore not quite as good um, weight reduction um, as liraglutide and semaglutide, um, but pretty close. It, it's actually quite good. Um, and um, it has the advantage of having this really nice pen where you don't see the needle. Uh, it's the one that I often cause, call the magic wand. And lastly, there's lixisenatide, uh, which is an analog of exenatide. Uh, frankly, it has a half-life of about three hours, and even though it's marketed once a day, it really doesn't cover uh, the day very well, um, and uh, therefore not as good uh, A1C reduction or weight reduction. Where it's really used is as a combination with insulin glargine, um, as a once-a-day injection, uh, which is quite nice. Um, there's also liraglutide mixed with insulin degladec as a co-formulated uh, product as well, and those co-formulated products are extremely powerful glucose-lowering agents because they combine the power of insulin with the activity of a GLP-1 receptor agonist.